Okay, in this programming activity, uh, you're going to be completing a class that implements a stack ADT. Um, and here's the API, and it's called string of or stack of strings array. Um, the underlying data structure the stack is going to be used is just a normal fixed array of uh, strings. And notice the the bit of the API in the red. Uh, for simplicity, we're going to start here uh, in our uh, adventures in implementing uh, ADTs. And, and this class has a maximum value, so you um, set this max size, and that's as many things as can be stored in the stack. Okay, and then um, in the next lecture, we're going to start looking at uh, ways you can uh, make a more flexible uh, data structure or use a more flexible data structure so your ADT doesn't have this. This isn't really, this isn't exactly the, the interface we'd like. Uh, we'd like the API not to have this maximum value thing. Okay, but everything else is the same as um, we've seen for the stack ADT. You can push things, you can pop things, you can see if it's empty, and then I've also added a little bonus method to string, so it prints out, you know, a list of all the things that are currently on the stack. <coughs> And the disadvantage, of course, is this max is somebody's got to actually guess the size of it before, um, you know, beforehand. And if they get the guess wrong, it could run out of space. All right. Um, we're going to um, do something maybe we haven't seen before it's called throwing an exception. And I've given you the code for this. But this is basically a way to cause the uh, program to crash, kind of like what happens if you uh, go out of bounds on an array or uh, parse something you can't parse. And this is going to happen in two situations. One is if we uh, push something, but we've run out of space in our, we've hit our maximum size. And the other circumstance is the pop, where um, we're popping, but there isn't anything um, on the stack. So maybe the caller should have called is empty first, but they didn't, and they tried to pop an empty stack. Uh, and you know, here's here's the program um, and I've you know there's empty spots and I've actually replaced the empty spots with a, a TBD to be de de to be determined uh, so fill in all those sections and there's a test main and if you get it right this is what you should get it was the best of times is uh, what's you know pushed onto the stack and then it's popped off in reverse order all right and then once it's all done popping there's nothing left in the stack Okay, so go ahead and download stack of strings array and then fill in all the to be determined sections. And then when you're done, uh, you can come back and I'll walk you through uh, my solution. All right, so first of all, let's work on the constructor. All right, uh, we've got two instance variables, items, which is an array of strings, and last. And this is in my little comment says it's the array index where the next item goes. All right. And well, what should we do with these things? Well, remember, this instance variable items, can I store anything in there? Can I do, you know, if I were to do something like items, you know, zero equals blah, that's destined to failure, right? Um, until I instantiate that array, there is no memory associated with, um, there's no slot here. There's just, items is currently just a empty uh, a vessel. And so let's uh, create that. And we need to create the memory. And how big of an array do we need? Well, we need max array okay we use a new operator that creates our memory and last um, is going to specify the index of the next item should go and the default value for int is, is zero but just um, for clarity I'll, I'll set it equal to zero so that takes care of our constructor let's do the push add the string s to the stack throw an error if it were full and so here's how you throw an exception so this is just like the exceptions you see when you kind of screw up your, you know, you get a bug in your program. Um, only you get to decide what the message is, and I've added the message stack is full. How can you tell if the stack is full? Well, last is going to point to the array index where we should put the next guy. So the very first guy is going to go index position 0, and then uh, the next guy will go in index position 1 and 2 and so on. Well, how do we tell if it's completely full? Well, if that last variable equals, well, what does it have to equal? Items.length. That's how many total slots are in our array. And remember, since it's zero based, as soon as that hits items.length, that's no longer a valid index, and then we're out of space. The second part, we've actually, so as long as something bad doesn't happen like that, then we can go ahead and put it into our array. And where do we want to put it? Well, um, items bracket last is the location 
the next location to put something. All right, and then don't forget we need to increment that last variable. All right, so the very first time this is called, this is going to put the item in items bracket zero, and then the second time push is called, it'll put it in um, bracket one. Pop. Pop has this issue, right, that um, if the stack is empty, okay, pop should throw in an exception. How do we tell if it's empty? Well, um, there's two different options here, um, and so you may have thought of either of these. One is this one, last equals equals zero. All right, if this last instance variable is still pointing to that very first item, you haven't pushed anything, because if you had, last would have been incremented in push to be one. Okay, so um, you could do it that way. Um, or maybe you've also thought, well, I'm, I've got this nice handy is empty method. I'm just going to call that. Okay, and you could do that too. All right, it would work. That would work just the same. We need to pop. And um, what item do we need to pop? Well, okay. Last is pointing to the index the next item goes. Okay, and we actually want um, the one before that. All right, so if we subtract one from last, okay, and then return that item, all right, okay, because last was pointing uh, one beyond, so say we just pushed one thing, then last would have been one. Well, this would subtract one, and last would become zero, and then we would return that item that's at that position zero, and then the next person to push would push on top of this one. Okay, and there's no real need to erase. I mean, we could, you know, you know, set this equal to, you know, the blank string or something like that. But this last instance variable actually controls what's uh, the next thing to be pushed, and so the next push will just overwrite uh, this item next time around. And how do we test if it's empty? Well, um, just like we what we had before in that if statement, right? If if that last instance variable is equal to zero then it's empty. Otherwise, if it's you know greater than zero, then it's not empty. All right. And this is a nice way to do that. Remember, this is a Boolean, and this method returns a Boolean. So there, this is a very simple way to do this. Often I see students, you know, if last equals equals zero, okay, return true, else return false, okay. You know, and that would work too, um, but you can just do it in one line like this. Um, it's 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 fine, it's one line, and it's easy to understand. <coughs> okay, finally, the result, we will need to create a string, okay, the result string, and what we want to do is loop over all the things in an array, okay, and how can we do that? Well, one way we could do that is to loop, create a loop over i, and then at each iteration of the loop, what do we do? We add on that item at the ith position and then we always put a space on the end. Okay, that will work. Alright, and I just ran it. And hopefully if I've done my job right, times of best the was it. Okay, and nothing's left afterwards. And so that's how you implement a stack ADT using an array.